guys, my name is Mike Patey. We are gonna combine Red Bull, Dubai, this hotel, and a one-of-a-kind airplane to land here. <laughs> are you kidding me? Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, look what Cup Crafters just dropped off. A carbon cup. It's absolutely awesome the way it is, but they asked me to play with it a little bit for something really exciting. So we're gonna change a few parts out for titanium. Strip off part of the fabric, lighten it up, do some special things with the fuel, add a little more horsepower to it. We're gonna see if we can squeeze just a little bit more out of this plane, make it a little more specific to a really cool event in Dubai. And so we're gonna dive into it, tear it apart. Let's see what we can do with a already amazing Cub Crafters Carbon Cub and get it ready for something awesome. So stay tuned, you know what we gotta do. Back to work. All right, guys, so this is gonna be a little bit painful, but mostly fun. <laughs> um, I have literally taken saws and skill saws and cut the tips off of carbon fiber wings before, so this is gonna be pretty mild, but today we're gonna modify a carbon cut. <laughs> That's really kind of fun. <laughs> All right, guys. Our job is to take out as much weight as possible out of this tub. We've taken out the wing tanks. We're going to relocate those. But we've also taken out the top skylight window. I think by just making a flat sheet of carbon, we'll take out quite a bit of weight. All right, guys. Ron made us a thin piece of carbon fiber to replace the skylight in the top. So we're gonna trim this up, and then not only that, we're gonna remake the back as it goes back to the back of the plane where there's usually a seam between a carbon fiber top that meets fabric and where the window meets. We want it all to be one part, then we can eliminate several pieces which all add weight, make it one giant carbon fiber piece. So I'm gonna trim this out, match all the holes since this part will need to go on a plane that has already been drilled and set with all its nut plates I need it to match. So we're gonna template that out, get the template done. Make the rest of the back, you guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, when it's all about saving weight, this is where you get to see where the rubber meets the road to see how much difference carbon fiber versus this Top. It's always give and take with the plane. We're gonna sacrifice this top and give up four pounds, roughly eight ounces. And we're gonna swap it for one pound, two ounces. It looks like it's trying to balance it here. Roughly one pound, two ounces. Is that four, eight? One, two? Yeah. 3.6 pounds? Sure. <laughs> if I did my math right, <laughs> back to work. <laughs> yes! Wow! Guys, I'm gonna show you real quick how this started out. This is the top glass, not the turtle deck, which is the behind it. 
I want to show you this weight real quick. Almost five pounds by itself. Then you would add on the turtle deck, which was, I don't have it right here. It was like two and a half pounds. You're like 7.5 pounds to cover the top of the aircraft. Then we made version one with two parts combined and we got it down to five and a half pounds. So we saved two pounds going to this version. And then once we got this done and fine tuned the body work and got it absolutely perfect, got some of the curvature a little better fitted to the aircraft, we decided to turn that part, which was going to be on the plane, which was two and a half pounds lighter, and make a final version and bag it. And now this is the combination of the turtle deck and where the top window is. And you can see it's final weight. Trying to balance here. Two pounds, 13 ounces. So now we are down to almost about five full pounds off the aircraft. Three quarters of the weight we got rid of. So for this Red Bull landing in Dubai, that makes a big difference. So we got a few more places to attack. Let's do the same thing over and over. Back to work. Guys, we've been working hard trying to get as much weight out of this airplane as possible. So what we did is we, we took a standard cup seat, took all of the upholstery off, and then what I did is I, I just hole sawed all of these holes out all around it. It's still structurally sound. So I'm just gonna lay a, one sheet of carbon over the top of this just to tie it all in. We'll get it reupholstered and we'll at least have two more pounds out of this airplane. Back to work. Hey guys, I'm gonna pause this video right here and talk about the holes we put into this seat and how I had Ron drill them out. If you look at the right moment, you can barely see along the main structural side of the seat, we didn't drill any holes. That's where if someone leans back or pushes hard, they could flex and break the seat. We took out areas where there was just extra weight like up the back, not part of the side rib structure, where you aren't putting a lot of weight, and then we put a single layer of carbon right back over it. And then also the main structural web along the side, we added more carbon fiber to kind of reinforce that and make it stronger while we lightened up other areas. The way Cub Crafters did it is actually perfect, but we're chasing ounces and grams. If I were building a plane just for common use, I wouldn't bother. But for Red Bull and this event, I need every advantage I can get. So that's what we've done. Back to work. making a custom tank for a carbon cub special project. So right now I'm just fitting up a new gas net fill to a tank that mounts in the back of the plane vertically like we did with Scrappy. The purpose of this is more for a competition style plane where you know if you put in three gallons of fuel, it doesn't matter how you slip, skid, whatever you do, that fuel is gonna get to the bottom pickup and you're never gonna port the fuel or suck air into it. Where if you had an aircraft traditional tank that's long and skinny, if you did a heavy slip and you were low on fuel, you may still have 10 gallons of fuel slip hard enough to one side that you suck air into the system, which means you may be flying with 10 gallons in one wing, 10 in the other, 20 gallons, you've got a massive amount of weight. It's like carrying a whole extra person during a competition just to keep your plane safe. We just got this part machined, drew this up in SolidWorks, and we're able to even machine all the threads. This looks like an even concentric bolt pattern. It's not, it matches this fuel sending unit. So this will slide into the tank. We machine this up so that we could embed it into the tank, have the fuel sending unit, vent tubes, transfer tubes, everything all built into the lid. So this custom part allows us to get a fuel sending unit that displays right on the Garmin screen. So we can cut this to length, trim just a couple inches off, 
then it's a capacitance probe and it'll measure the resistance in the tube from zero to five volts and it will tell us exactly what's in this tank. All right guys, just trimmed up our capacitance probe. And this is the custom billet part we machined earlier for our custom tank that goes in. Now, one of the things you wanna be really careful with with a capacitance probe is you don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. You think you would because you want it to read everything, but I'm gonna hold it off just over an inch. And the reason is you can get water condensation in a tank. That's why we sump our fuel tanks and water inside a capacitance probe. You wouldn't think because they're both liquids that it would mess it up, but it does. If that water gets trapped inside here, which sometimes it can, then your fuel probe won't work until you pull it apart, blow it out, and sometimes it can be difficult. So I wanna keep this up above the water, so I've held it up a bit. So the tank is actually gonna read empty when it gets to about this point. You never get that much water unless you're not sumping your fuel. Then from here up, it's gonna read absolutely perfect. Centered in the tank, no matter where you lean this tank with the probe in the middle, it's always going to read perfect. Downhill, uphill, slip right, slip left. The fuel will always stay centered on this no matter which way you go. Even if the fuel's like that, it will still read correct. So anyway, that's why we did this. It's just a safer backup tank. It's a lot of talking. Back to work. Got so much room to work in here. That's turning out really good. We're mounting up the new fuel tank. It goes in the back. I've got a little pocket welded in the bottom, so once you center it up, it snaps in, locks in place. There's two more straps that go around at the bottoms in the cradle. The next got to come up here, so let me set that out of the way for now. So I just bent up a simple aluminum part. It's going to go up. It should fit right there, and then kind of squeeze into place there. Then this will get mounted here. This is a new fuel neck. And then there'll be a bottom one. They'll be attached like this. This aluminum one will go to this pipe we've already welded to the tank. And this will be the new fill location. So it'll be kind of different to fuel a cub just standing and looking at it rather than standing on a tire. But uh, it's going to work out great. So we've got a lot to do. That's work. Right, guys gas cap assembly is on and that's just with a couple of clicos in it i'm going to pro seal that joint also rivet it down there rivet it up to the main carbon top this is now the vent for the plane pointing forward we got seven gallons here we're also going to have another removable tank so you can have 20 some odd gallons or just seven if you were going to do some type of competition and you wanted to make sure you had all the weight out possible and just run off this tank. So it's gonna be adaptable depending on if you're cross country or doing competition. So back to work. Simple little task. Um, we need to be able to make the secondary fuel tank removable. It's a larger fuel tank to get this kind of more of a competition style carbon cub to and from events. So we wanted a nice big tank can come in and out with a couple of quick pins. We also wanted the fuel line to disconnect between them really quickly and close off. 
the place that the fuel line needs to connect is kind of in a tight spot to get two big wrenches back there and do it might be difficult. I've made a simple little bracket that holds one end of the end fitting. So you only have to get a wrench on here when you pull it, it can't spin. It's locked into this little tray. So I would like to say I built this because it's cool, but I did it, Josh did it. He's holding the camera. And so we're gonna make him put up a picture of Josh in the video right here. But kind of describe what I'm talking about. Look how lightweight this is. It's hollow inside. It's got the shape of the nut on one side. It's all out of super, super thin chrome ollie but it locks in so you don't have to hold this side once it's welded and you can one hand wrench it. Quick and easy, way to go Josh, back to work. Okay guys, we're almost done with the nitro system. Just threading this in, this is the intake to a carbon cub and for the Red Bull competition carbon cub, wanna go ahead and give it a little bit of nitrous. There have been people running as much as 100 horsepower on this engine. I don't wanna push it that far. I wanna keep this relatively safe. I say relatively not because we're being unsafe, but because people can go higher and higher nitrous levels. I'm gonna keep it at 25 horsepower per side, giving a maximum of 50 horsepower of nitrous. Even though that should be completely safe every time, anytime you do nitrous, you have a little more risk. So I'm gonna try to mitigate that risk a little bit. If I were to wanna to add 100 horse to this, I could do it all through one side. I've got two nozzles here, small jets, so I can run it through two sides. It does several things. One, gives a better spray atomization to split that into two sides in case there's air flowing around one side of a curve and the airflow isn't perfectly balanced inside this area. We're getting both sides. We're turning it 45 to the next rotational turn. And it also helps us out if we had a little particulate sneak pass pre-filters on the fuel system and the nitrous system that might try and sneak and clog an injector nozzle. If you were to clog the fuel nozzle, that's where your risk comes in. You clog a nitrous nozzle, you just don't get the horsepower, the engine gets the fuel, runs a little bit rich. However, you do have higher risk of hurting the engine. If the fuel nozzle clogged and you hit the nitrous, went in, you can get a lean condition. So there's two things we're gonna do to help mitigate that risk. One of those is two nozzles doing 25 aside rather than one. So if a fuel nozzle did clog, we'd only lose half the fuel of that 50 horse shot, not all of the fuel for a 50 horse shot. So we could still have 25 NOS, 25 NOS, 25 of the jetting for fuel. And if we clogged one nozzle, we wouldn't go completely lean. So that's added, the better disbursement's better. We're also going one step further to add even more protection so we don't lean out the engine and create detonation. And that is we're gonna set up a minimum mixture level when using NOS so that if both fuel nozzles clogged, we have enough extra fuel in the system, in the carburetor side, into the engine so that you still are rich enough to not create detonation. It wouldn't be as optimal as having the wet kit work appropriately, but you have less risk of hurting the engine. So that's a lot of talking about a really fun system, nitrous. Um, we're gonna get it on this plane. 50 horsepower is gonna be a lot of fun. High elevation, hot areas, or that little burst even off sea level, or a really cool spot off a very short, tiny, tiny runway somewhere. So we're excited to get this done for Red Bull. Let's get this, the lines, the tank, everything in. We'll do a test on it soon. You guys know the drill. Get back to it. All right, guys, we're ready to install the fuel pumps. Everything is done. Fuel pressure for the NOS fuel pressure, fuel pressure for the car fuel pressure. These are the two regulators. They're already set. Pressure gauge, these two little lines right here are the feedback loop lines so that these regulators stay absolutely spot on. Dual fuel pumps, a bypass one-way check valve, uh, fuel line that allows the fuel to flow. If both pumps fail, we have two pumps redundancy. This is what goes to the fuel tank. These two go out to NOS and carburetor. So now that I've got this whole assembly ready to install, you can see my poor penmanship right here. This gives the weight and the center of the mass moment is right on that point right there. So I actually literally balance this and then I weigh it. And then I mark where it goes in the plane based on that center point from front to back. 
I can do my weight and balance as I go. So this is gonna go in quick. It's going right by the fuel tank that we put in the back of the plane. You guys know the drill, back to work. Oh my gosh, you guys, we're having so much fun putting this plane together for this awesome, awesome event. I can't wait to get this all wrapped up and show everybody what we've done. Next video is coming right around the corner, back to back. We want to show you how we get there, how we did it, fly to Dubai, and make something awesome happen with an amazing team. Check out the next video. It's coming fast. Back to work.